Hey y'all, welcome back to Poplar Creek Farm. Today I want to talk to you guys about something that's been weighing on my mind a lot and I think is weighing on a lot of people's minds um, and that's just the state of the economy and how we can save money, um, especially being a small farm um, homestead. So these are things that a lot of people can apply anyways, um, but some of them are more exclusive to, you know, being, a, being able to have livestock, being able to have um, produce coming in from your own property. So some of the things that we have done to save money um, is I make bread. I make all of our bread products. Uh, I make the, you know, our sandwich bread. I make um, bread, bread when we're doing like soups and things, you know, crunchier bread, um, an artisan bread. I make tortillas. I do French breads. So my husband can have um, subs, things like that. So I make all of our bread products, which you know, in the, in the realm of things, in the big scheme, it does it save us tons of money? No, but it does save us some. Um, and every little bit that we can do helps. So every week I make at least one batch of sandwich bread, which is two loaves. Um, and that helps a lot. And as you can see back here, I've got my sourdough going as well. I killed off my last sourdough just because in the summertime, um, it was so busy. I didn't have time to really like feed my sourdough well. Um, and so it just got away from me. So I have started again and it's so far so good. Don't want to jinx it, but it's been doing well so far. Um, and I'll have sourdough bread going and we can make a lot of things with sourdough, which that we don't have, to have yeast for, which is really nice. Um, I mean, some recipes we use like discard, you do need some, you know, commercial yeast, but it's still less. Uh, I'll make pancakes with it. I will make, you know, all of our rolls. Um, I love, love, love sourdough. We make bagels with it. Um, just so many different things that like, I didn't even realize you could do with sourdough before I had my last sourdough starter. Um, and so that's just gonna save us more money just because it's again, making things homemade. So, you know, a bag of, or a loaf of bread, um, especially because we always try to get like the, you know, the natural kind. Um, we typically get whole wheat and I don't make whole wheat bread, but we get uh, the bread, had gone up to like three something a, um, a loaf and a bag of flour costs me, you know, seven, eight dollars, but it makes quite a few loaves. Um, and I don't really need much else going into it. In this sandwich bread recipe, um, it needs some milk and some butter uh, and a little sugar and obviously yeast because I, again, this isn't sourdough specifically, although I do want to get to doing the sourdough sandwich bread again, like I had done before. So then I won't need yeast. Um, and I don't remember all of what goes into that one. So it may be different. So there's other things that go into it. And of course it's again, not saving us hundreds of dollars a month, but it still saves, it still helps. Um, so those are ways we are offsetting costs. We also have solar panels on our house and this is not something that we did just now or um, that has changed, but we do have 20 solar panels on our house, which is about an 80% offset. Last summer was a very rainy summer, so we didn't have a ton of offset, obviously, because there wasn't as much sun. This summer was dry and sunny, very, very hot and sunny. So we should have a good amount of um, electric net metered so that we can use that through the winter. Um, I'm hoping we can get through like January without having an electric bill other than we have our connection fee. And then obviously come like April, uh, May, we start to, you know, produce solar again. Um, so we net meter with our company, with our uh, with national grid. So basically whatever we overproduce, they bank for us and then we get it back when um, we're not able to produce as much. So obviously like this time of year. Like today it's like super foggy out right now. It's supposed to be sunny later, but it is very dense fog. You can't even see out the window. Um, so that's a way we save money. The other way, so, I'm bundled up in my house because we are not turning on our furnace right now. We have a propane furnace and propane has just gone up. Propane, oil, natural gas, all of them have gone up so much. So last year, it went up about 50% from the previous year. Now we filled it a little bit less last year. I think we filled it one less time than we did the year before. So probably equaled out, you know, close to about um, year to year. But this year we're going to try even more than we did last year to rely on our wood stove. Um, so unless that's a really cold day, like today the high is 63. So my house right now is like 62 degrees. Um, and that's just from overnight, you know, the cool down overnight. 
unless it's, you know, the highest 40s, 50s, we're not using any form of heat. We're just bundling up. I got my fuzzy socks on. Um, we're just trying to stay warm in other ways. Obviously, if it gets to a point where we're like, we're freezing, we'll start a fire um, and we'll get the wood stove going and, you know, warm up the house. But we're going to try to rely a lot more on that. Um, for some people, it might not be significantly more affordable because they have to buy split wood. But we, um, my husband does firewood, so we, we get log loads delivered to us. Um, and then we split it, or, you know, my husband blocks it and we split it. And so for us, it's a lot more affordable to do firewood than it would be if we had to, um, you know, we had heat exclusively with propane or if we had to buy, you know, split wood. Um, but even still, I think split woods would still be more affordable than propane. So again, we're just relying on that and relying on bundling up when we need to. Um, like next week, the highs I think are in the 40s. So yeah, we'll have the wood stove going. We're not going to have, you know, we're not going to freeze. Um, but it's, I'd rather use that than propane and have, you know, have to fill up every couple months with propane. So another thing we do, um, obviously we, we had a large garden, although the garden did get away from me per the usual. Um, and I didn't put a lot of, I, I didn't do as many stable crops as I wish I had. Um, so we did do sweet potatoes and that was a fail because of the weeds. Um, the weeds just took over them. And then I couldn't, I couldn't really mow in between them because I had a sweet potatoes vine. Um, so next year when we do potatoes and we do like sweet potatoes and things, I'm going to get straw and I'm going to mulch more heavily. I didn't do any potatoes this year. Um, I had potatoes put in the ground and I just never got to it. Again, it just got, we got busy. Um, I had the kids home with me all summer long, which was amazing. I absolutely loved it. I worked two days a week and then I had three farmer's markets. Um, but just with everything and trying to make sure that they had a good summer too, I didn't get to everything. So, but we did, we did put up some um, produce from the garden. We have quite a few uh, bags of beans that were frozen. Um, I didn't do as much canning this year just because in the midst of being busy, it was easier to freeze them. And I mean, it's not the most, you know, economical way to store things, but we have three large freezers going anyways because of, our three chest freezers going because of all the meat that we produce. So it, it wasn't a huge deal to have a little extra, you know, a few extra things in there. Um, we have obviously a tomato sauce and things canned. I have salsa from last year because I did tons of salsa last year. Uh, I have pickles from last year still. Um, so we kind of, offset at least some of our produce um you know we offset a decent amount this summer and then we offset some um or we'll have offset some for the winter by preserving i also we went apple picking and i canned a bunch of applesauce um so things like that are just little offsets and we produce all of our own chicken we raise all of our own chicken we do not purchase any chicken um which so we purchased we we purchased chicks um cornish cross meat chicks and we raise them out for eight weeks. Obviously we're feeding them, we're feeding them a non-GMO feed, which is a higher quality feed. Um, it's a little more expensive, but we also sell some of our chickens. So that helps offset some of the costs of our own chickens. Um, and this year we ground some up. So we have ground chicken, we piece them for ourselves. So we have bags of chicken breasts, we have bags of legs, um, our thighs, we have bags of wings, things like that so that we can pull them out and not have to do a whole bird all the time. We also purchased half a cow from um, Banks Farm up in Boonville. They are wonderful. It is 100% grass-fed beef. The quality is just amazing. Um, so for half a cow, we paid about $1,200, which, uh, how is that saving money? I know it doesn't sound like it's super economical, but when you break it down, it's really not bad. We had 76, I didn't count everything we got. You know, I didn't count every roast and every steak and everything, but we had 76 one pound packages of ground beef. That is huge. If I went and bought 76 one pound packages of ground beef at the grocery store, I mean, the price would just be crazy. So it really wasn't more than, I probably actually saved money, especially from current meat prices. Um, and we have the meat in the freezer, so we don't have to worry about every week or every month spending that money. We had that money that we, you know, made sure we had for the beef and that's paid for. Um, we have a little bit of pork left from the half a pig that we got last year. And our pigs, we have three pigs that'll go to butcher in December. Um, and that will provide us, we will have one whole pig for ourselves and the other two um, are actually being split into halves for other families. My parents uh, included in that. 
and my parents, my in-laws, and a couple other people um, purchased halves, which again, helps offset the cost of ours. So, and then we have two more going to butcher in February, which we will sell as USDA um, pieced. And then we will have three more that go to butcher in March. Um, and again, it's just offsetting costs of raising out the meat for ourselves too. Now, a big thing that we do is we try <laughs> not to waste. I try really hard not to waste food um, or to not waste especially the meat that we, you know, raise ourselves and, and harvest or that we purchase locally that's good quality. Um, so we typically, when we take out a whole chicken, the first night we rotisserie it, we roast it. Sometimes I'll put it in the crock pot, um, you know, do some shredded chicken, things like that. And then the second night we will typically either make something out of the leftovers, um, chicken salad, you know, put it on chicken or put it on salad, um, make sandwiches with it, just eat it as leftovers things like that. And then the third night we're doing what I'm doing today. So this is boiling down the carcass from the chicken that we had roasted. Now there's not a ton of meat left on it, a little bits here and there. Um, I pretty much carved it down as much as I could. And then this will boil for typically a full day. Um, I do it, start it in the morning and then, you know, uh, make whatever I'm going to make with it in the evening. So you can see all that good fat boiling off this will be it's bone broth so it's really really healthy plus although there may not be a lot of meat off of this there's some and we're gonna get nutrition from the broth itself so so i will make um tonight i'm probably gonna make chicken and dumplings i make chicken soup um sometimes i just freeze it or i can can it if i want we try to use every chicken we get we try to get three meals out of um so last night what i did was like carved off as much as I could of the chicken. I put some in, put it in some gravy um, and we had it over pasta. So a very simple meal, but again, it's using what we have and what we're able to either make, raise or grow ourselves. Um, the pasta I buy right now, I do have a pasta maker um, and I have eggs cause I have chickens, but I just haven't really, I tried making egg noodles once and I screwed it up. So I'm a little intimidated, but I really do want to make egg noodles again. And I'd love to make some sourdough noodles. Um, so that again, it's just less that we have to buy. Those are all ways that we are trying to save money. Um, obviously we're not doing a lot of eating out. We are trying to, whatever I, you know, make at craft fairs or farmer's markets, we try to use for our groceries. Um, things like that are just little, little ways we can offset our costs. And next year, I'm hoping my garden will be, you know, amazing. And I will have a lot of staple crops to get us through the winter because you know, they're, although right now everything is super high in costs, I think we are going to go into a bit of a recession. Um, and so demand will be down. So prices should go down some, but I don't want to rely on that. And I don't want to hope that that's going to happen. Um, I kind of rather secure it for myself and my family, uh, going forward. Also secure things like doing more um, perennial crops. We have our apple orchard, um, you know, our apple trees, we have our peach trees, we have elderberry, we've got blueberry, raspberry, um, we have wild blackberry. So just doing more perennials. I've asked my parents <laughs> for Christmas, instead of buying me like any other gifts or anything, I'd really just want some, some trees. Uh, I really would like some cherry trees. That's kind of, I'd rather get that than something I may use a couple of times. Uh, and we're also, again, that's another thing we're saving money on this year, Christmas, we're doing minimal. Uh, obviously I make soaps, I make candles, I make lip balms, lotions. Um, so that's what gifts are gonna be for a lot of people. Um, maybe some meat, you know, if we, especially if we get our pigs back, um, meat will be a gift. Things like that where we can save ourselves having to go out and buy a gift. Um, my kids are gonna have less this year for Christmas and that's okay, they don't need much. Um, Last night I picked up two games and we had a blast last night playing games uh, and had a family game night, little things. So that's all we're gonna, those kinds of things are what we're gonna do for Christmas this year. More of memories than items. So I hope this helps you guys, gives you guys some ideas to save some money. Um, if you guys have more ideas, please leave them down in the comments. I'm always open to more ideas. I am trying to think of everything I can do to save money this year. and. Oh, one other thing I'm doing is I contacted a local farm um, that I am I'm friends with um, to ask if, hey, at the end of the season, if you guys don't have somebody who's going to come on, pick up some pumpkins, extra pumpkins, let me know. That's feed for my pigs, my chickens. Um, they will gladly eat pumpkins. And they said, yep, come with a truck and get as much as you want. So I'm really excited for that. 
And again, it's just reaching out and knowing your resources and, and utilizing them. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Remember we're going today for a better tomorrow. Please like and subscribe and join me on the next one.